Welcome to today's masterclass titled Mastering Your Marketing and Creating a Content Calendar. I'm your host, Andrew Wallace, and this masterclass is for you if you're a fitness professional who's struggling to generate good quality leads um, every week and new clients every month. So if that's a struggle that you're facing, then this masterclass is for you. So today, what I want to talk about is understanding the essence of a content calendar and its role that it has within your business for smart digital marketing planning. We're also going to look at learning this crucial skill of setting clear marketing goals. And I've got some practical examples to help you um, ultimately have better business outcomes, i.e. you're generating new clients will recognize the power of aligning your content with key dates, key holidays, and uh, events in a, in a calendar that's ultimately going to help you enhance your audience engagement. We'll look to also put together a strategic but simple yet cohesive content plan by mastering the art of crafting monthly themes and weekly topics. This is something that I work closely with my clients so that we can get into a frequency um, of content creation that is manageable because at the end of the day, we're all busy, we're working with clients, so uh, but we still know the importance of having to market to generate uh, new leads as well. And so we've got a lot to get into, as you can see, but I'll do that in a timely manner for you because I'm and mindful of the time that you're devoting to watch this today. So first out the gate, what exactly is a content calendar? Well, it, essentially, it's a strategic tool that outlines your publishing schedule and it helps provide a roadmap for content creation, generally days, weeks and months in advance. Its significance is that it helps you become efficient with your planning uh, gives you, and if you've got a team, clarity on what content you're creating and how it, it aligns with your overall marketing plans and goals. And it gives you a strategic insight into how you're performing. So like with anything, if, uh, for example, when you're working with a brand new client, um, you look to set clear goals and it's exactly the same when it comes to managing your business. And in this instance, um, setting out clear goals um, for your marketing so that that generates the leads to enable you to hit your overarching business goals. But goals, as we know, they serve the bedrock and they certainly serve the bedrock of your content calendar and offering you a well-defined direction. So our goals here with our content is that we're ultimately looking to enhance brand awareness. You know, you've got your business, but it's not the field of dreams. Um, unfortunately, I'm a big Kevin Costner fan, but he lied to us in that film. Build it. They won't come if they do not know who we are, what we're about and where we are. So uh, enhancing our brand awareness is a clear goal that we need to overcome when it comes to our marketing. Equally, we're looking to foster meaningful client engagement. More often than not, when people first see our content or our, whatever marketing that we look to put out there, they don't know us. They're what I would call cold audience. So we've got to warm them up. We've got to build trust and showcase the skills that you offer and show how those skills uh, will help them overcome a particular health and wellness challenge that they're facing. So fostering that uh, meaningful uh, engagement is key. And of course, any marketing has to drive traffic to our business and primarily um, the first port of call will be our website. You do have a website, don't you? If you don't, we need to talk. Be 
because we don't go um, building your business on rented land. And what I mean by that is absolutely we must and should use um, our social media platforms of choice, but don't put all your eggs on there because if for whatever reason they change the algorithm or they change tact in, in the direction they're going, and they, uh, for whatever reason, they um, um, say they, they close down your account, you've lost all of your contacts. So what I prefer is that we, we own um, our, our digital home. And our digital home, in this case, is our website. You can add content on there. You own it. You can build your list um, and, and so on and so forth. But then we use social media um, to build awareness of us. But then from our social media platform, we're driving the traffic to our website. Once they're on our website, ultimately our goal then is to get them onto our mailing list. But I'll come to that uh, at a later time. But the key thing to remember here is defining measurable goals not only guides your content creation, but also serves as a yardstick for assessing the success of your comprehensive marketing strategy. Okay, so why did I mention key dates? Well, they are a big assistance when it comes to um, creating content. Plus, you know, we can piggyback off particular uh, dates that appear in the calendar. You know, I've got a couple of examples here um, of some pieces of content that uh, folks have put together. Uh, the first one being uh, obviously in November in the US, um, it's Thanksgiving. Uh, Canada um, is it end of October, uh, but um, uh, there's a Thanksgiving workout here, which would be right on point if it's delivered around that date. You know, it's going to be a newsworthy item. And equally, we all have the festive season, uh, Christmas, and um, having something uh, around those uh, those dates uh, can be can be key as well. So you might have a promotion. In fact, a promotion in December. Rather than waiting to January, uh, you're jumping ahead of the gate, uh, ahead of the game there. So that could be a, a, a great way to do that. Or, you know, putting together um, some lead magnets, some PDFs, some video content uh, based around uh, healthy recipes or how to survive uh, Christmas. Um, and th th those can be key around those dates as well. The way I like to build out uh, my marketing calendar, and this is what I work through with my clients, is that um, at the end of each or coming to the end of each year, we look at our content, not the whole way through the year, but we have, we like big picture uh, thinking to begin with, and then we scale it down into each quarter. But we plan out, um, no matter if it's for the quarter, for the year, um, we plan out monthly themes. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, if we assign each month a unique theme, that enables us then to uh, direct our content creation with a cohesive narrative that ultimately is going to resonate with our audience. So again, I've got a couple of examples here for January and February where Primarily January, you know, everyone's um, hot to, to trot when it comes to their health and fitness. They they make their New Year's resolutions. Of course, they fail those New Year's resolutions because, you know, they're a dream. They're not a defined goal. We know that as fitness professionals. But your uh, January uh, theme might potentially be new beginnings. Could be goal setting. Could be anything you want it to be. But in this instance, um, I've put new beginnings so we're aligning that with the fitness related resolutions that everyone uh, puts up to play. And although you can't really see uh, the image too well on, on the screen here, but on the left hand one, we've got some tips and it's a, it's a blog post that, uh, that was put together. February, we're jumping on the bandwagon of Valentine's and love, etc. Uh, um, and in that instance, We've used the theme, love your health. 
And then the example here is um, uh, partner training. You know, why, why not par partner up and enjoy your sessions with a significant other? And there's a video there of um, uh, on um, a social media post of a couple uh, training together. So again, we're tying it in to that love your health theme um, within February. Key point to remember here is these themes not only guide your content, but also create a narrative that engages your audience throughout the year. And ever since, and for the past five, six years now, I've been following this format. It just makes content creation so much easier because rather than sitting there with a blanking cursor thinking, what am I going to create content on? Utilizing this framework just allows me then to think, right, January is our new beginnings, let's focus and we can then create content around that particular theme and break it down into uh, weekly topics that we can talk about. And as a perfect segue there, now after we've got our theme, we, we go and outline our weekly topics. And essentially what we're doing here, we're just building on that uh, that theme for the month and we break it down into weekly topics that we can discuss um, on that. So given an example here of um, for September, for example, I'll put strength in September. That's the monthly theme. And then your topic might be in this example, uh, week one, you do a video of an overview of some power packed workouts. Week two might be a video or it could be a blog post or it could be social media content based around nutrition for strength and you're giving your recommendations. You might do a video of you in your kitchen showing um, viewers you putting together a strength nutrition breakfast, uh, your 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 favorite breakfast recipes. Um, it could be lunch. I'm thinking Joe Wicks here, his style of videos that he did back in the day. Uh, fantastic way of, of amplifying your message about that. Week three could be a success stories of strength. What, what's a success story of strength, you might ask? Well, this could be a case study. A, a testimonial, um, uh, an interview with a client that's had success, or you just on video talking about uh, one of your clients that's had success um, recently on that. These stories will resonate with your target audience. And then wait, week four, hey, we all know about the power, you know, mental uh, resilience. Um, so talking about the mental aspects of things. So again, that could be could be a social media post. It could be um, a blog post. It could be video content uh, around that. But hopefully you can see that you have your monthly theme and then each week you're just breaking down and focusing on a primary topic that's relative to that um, overarching theme for that month. Key point to remember here is aligning weekly topics with monthly themes helps reinforce your messaging, provides your audience with a clear and compelling storyline that ultimately is help going to keep them engaged and ultimately connected with your brand. Okay, so we've talked about our theme, we've talked about our weekly topics. Now we look to choose what content types you're going to utilize to get that message, get that content out there to your, uh, to your audience, to your tribe. Now, I always recommend diversifying your content. So having a mixture of blog posts, videos, social medias, because we don't know at the, right out the gate what's going to resonate best with your audience. Marketing is, is, it's a trial and error process. You know, what works for one client uh, when I'm working with doesn't unfortunately work for another. We've got to utilize the fundamentals, but then we've got to find what's going to resonate with your target audience. But no matter what we choose, each type is going to serve a unique purpose and it allows us to maximize our impact across the platforms that we choose. The key ones are obviously blog posts, 
um, vi they're hosted on your on your own website primarily. Although you could, um, as you build a network uh, and relationships with other business owners, you might guest blog. But primarily, I'm looking at uh, uh, ownership and having this on your own post uh, on your own website. Video again, that can be um, in, embedded on into your blog post and, and onto your own website. But equally, I would be looking at setting up your um, own TV channel, i.e., your own YouTube channel, um, and having those videos containing good titles, uh, good headlines that are going to resonate with your audience. They're going to be optimized and contain keywords that people are searching for either on Google or on YouTube so that those videos are going to be found. But video is a, um, great. And of course, YouTube and all of the social media platforms, they are looking for us as business owners, as fitness professionals to put together um, our, our video content. And then finally, we've got social media updates. Um, so that obviously, we will utilize that because that's um, where we're going to be found. We're going to build awareness and then that drives our audience back to our website or to our YouTube channel. The key point to remember here, each content type serves a unique purpose in conveying your message and understanding the preferences of your audience, allowing you to maximize the impact of your content across various platforms. So how do we assign the platforms? Well, for me, it's identifying the platforms best suited for each type of content that you create, um, whether it's blogs, videos, or social media. Um, strategic platform selection is key for effective distribution. But equally, we've got to appear on the platforms where our target audience's eyes are. You know, So if your audience is primarily on Instagram, well, it doesn't make any sense to be putting content out on LinkedIn. Um, equally, if um, if your our audience is actually on Twitter, then why are we posting on Facebook? So you've got to understand where your audience is. But then once we do that, um, these are the uh, frameworks that I look to uh, play. So obviously, as I say, blog posts get posted on your website. Videos, yes, they can go on you and should go on your website, but primarily they're getting put um, on YouTube so that we can drive traffic back to our digital home, to our website. And then social media in updates, um, example here, uh, one on Instagram. Now, we're busy, you know, we work with our clients, we've got our life to lead um, and creating content is not something that you just click your fingers and it's done. It takes time. I appreciate that. So the approach I like to take is uh, batch content creation. Um, it helps boost efficiency and consistency and allows you to streamline your creative process. Um, so I generally designate a specific day for my blog writing. I usually do uh, content on a Tuesday and a Friday. And equally, it's the same with video shooting as well. So one week it's blog writing, the next week it's video. And in doing that keeps me consistent. And uh, through being consistent, um, I'm getting momentum with the content that I look to create. I'm not saying those are the days for you. It depends on you, but I would look to fit time uh, um, outside of your client training window that, that you're able to do that. And you might choose what, rather than one day a week, you might find that um, it's one or two days a month that you utilize and that's your focus. You know, you do your deep work um, like Carl Newport um, recommends where we're focused for our time that we're set aside to get these tasks in play. Um, but finding that what works best for you, uh, keeping consistent will, will give you a better choice, chance of success. So why are we creating content? 
well, essentially, we're looking to um, incorporate engagement. We're looking for that engagement from our audience uh, because, unfortunately, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it's something like 95% or 98% of all content that's created across the, uh, the, the digital world never gets seen, never gets read. That's shocking. And if you think of the amount of time that goes into creating this content, it is demoralizing. So our goal with any content that we create is to look to engage our audience. And if you have a better understanding of who your target audience is, and as a fitness professional, I hope that you do, please don't tell me that you uh, you can train anybody. Uh, yes, I guess that's strictly true, but that's vanilla. We want to be focused. We want to be the rum and raisin uh, of the ice cream world. We want to be a, a little bit different. Um, maybe rum and raisin isn't edgy, but we, we, we don't want to try and be the generalist. We want to be the professional. We want to niche down so that when somebody who um, sees our message and it resonates with them, we've got a much better chance to engage with them on that. So how can we do that with our content? Well, three examples here are uh, recording a fitness challenge that you look to run. Uh, you know, maybe it's a plank, you know, we've seen plank challenges, squat challenges, all sorts of things. But maybe you can uh, do something like that. I remember uh, a few years ago when I was uh, uh, I was living overseas in, in Australia and we were part of a, um, uh, um, um, a fitness community. And each month we would have a challenge that was put on. It might be a rowing challenge, but the one I remember vividly was the power wheel challenge. Uh, the power wheel, if you don't know, is um, a contraption, I guess, for want of a better word, that John Hines of uh, Monkey Bar Gym created. It's like an ab wheel, essentially, but you can equally, the you can put your feet into it um, and you would be in, uh, so using the image on here, the fitness challenge in the plank position where your feet are uh, attached to the wheel and you're in that uh, that push-up position. Then if you walk your hands outwards uh, with the wheel attached to your feet, you're able to, to move forward the, the wheel rolling. So it's obviously um, uh, a challenging exercise for the core, uh, shoulders, well, ultimately the whole body, of course. And we had the track measured in the, in the studio and you would go backwards and forwards racking up how many meters you could do. And we would mark on the, um, on, on the board on the wall over the course of the month, how many meters we attained you know, at, either before or after each of our sessions. And the winner was whoever had done the most uh, meters over the course of the month. These sort of things, and if we're showcasing that on our social media, it's amplifying awareness of who we are and what we do and the, and the fun challenges that we look to have. Equally, I'm sure you see these on social media, having polls, um, uh, on, on your Instagram, your Facebook, or whatever it might be. What do you love more? In this ex in, in, example, a little hard to read, but A, cardio, B, weights. So you, you're going to, that going out to your target audience and it, it, it gets that engagement, you're able then to follow up and communicate, converse with these individuals, build a rapport with them. That's what social media is about. It's engaging with people. We're not pushing a hard sell on them. We're just getting to know them. They're getting to know us. And at the right time, uh, once the trust has been uh, forged, then there's a good chance that they're going to want to learn more about what you do and you can invite them in then uh, to participate in an upcoming session. Another great one as well is interactive Q&A sessions. Now, you can do ideally do these live on your socials um, because um, if you think about it, you're getting asked in, in your day-to-day -day work with clients many questions. If they're asking these questions, other people are going to be asking these questions as well. So how can we, um, how can we broadcast this? Well, through Q&A sessions where if you're answering those questions, then you're building rapport, you're showcasing your skills, you're increasing 
the authority you have within your field, you become the standout fitness um, expert. And uh, as people see that, they're going to come over to your read about who you are, jump over to your website, join your mailing list, and ultimately then we'll be able to um, have a strategy session or invite them into a session at the right time. But these are all great ways of incorporating engagement. Now, the key here, utilize storytelling. I'm a huge fan of Donald Miller and his business, Story Brand. He's got a number of books out there, Marketing Made Simple, Business Made Simple. Um, Story Brand is one as well. But it all is based around the format of storytelling, you know, and um, if we can tell a story that's going to resonate with our audience, uh, it draws them in, uh, it connects with them. Uh, through compelling narratives. And if you're able to sprinkle in a blend of your personal touch to that as well, then it's really uh, essentially humanizing, um, showcasing your personality, as I say. So how can we do that? Well, I've got three examples, as you can see on the screen. First of all, sharing case studies and sharing success stories, stories about uh, the successes your clients have had. Because if you think about it, as a business owner, we can talk until we're blue in the face about how great we are, the qualifications we've got, strong first certified, um, um, AS, uh, ASCM, um, uh, blah, blah, blah. But which is all well and good. It's a bit boring, a bit bland. But uh, of course, it's important but it's not really talking the, the right language to the person who you're talking to. Whereas if you're sharing a story about a client who maybe was reluctant or had a little bit of trepidation about jumping into becoming healthier and working with you, but then um, they tell the, the journey that they took and the success that they've had, then that's going to resonate. So that's why I really love uh, blending success stories into any pieces of content that you look to put together, be it blogs, be it your videos, or be it your social media. Equally, te client testimonials and client reviews. You know, if we're getting, and we should be getting reviews on our Google or Facebook or whatever, or Trustpilot or whatever platform you choose, my, my preference is Google reviews then you build in that over time and that's enhancing your reputation. And again, we can showcase them. We can take screenshots of those testimonials using a tool like Canva, make them look pretty and then post them up onto your social media uh, platform of choice. They can tell a compelling story as well. And then of course your own personal anecdotes, you know, your own personal uh, stories or experiences and um, they all play their part in, in you know humanizing uh, your brand etc and having uh, that uh, powerful emotional um, connection created this ultimately impacts your audience's perception and grows trust and ultimately over time loyalty Social media hashtags, they are dropping down a wee bit, but they still have um, a part to play. Um, and so I'm sharing some here as examples. Uh, you know, you might do Workout Wednesday. Um, so have hashtag Workout Wednesday. You might use the moniker Wellness Warrior. Uh, you know, mine's Freedom Finder, you know, with my Braveheart uh, moniker there. But I've got some examples here and having uh, maybe brand specific where you've got your business name, fitness challenge or health goals or whatever you you feel uh, might uh, be part. But the key thing to remember here is customizing brand specific hashtags with your actual brand or business name or a unique identifier, then these examples can be adapted to suit your fitness business and its distinctive identity. Okay, now we've got the components together. Now is where we start designing that content calendar. So remember we have our uh, monthly themes, then we break it down into um, our topics. So I've given some examples here, albeit very small of, uh, of examples that you can put together. There's a whole heap 
of social media calendars out there. I've got my own that um, I can uh, share with you as well, if you're interested in. But it's finding one that works for you, you know, because uh, I've, I've found that you can put together the greatest tools, the best tools in the world. But if somebody finds them um, clunky or a little difficult to understand, they're not going to use them. So um, um, I like giving you the strategy and giving you the ideas and then allowing you to find the best framework for or best calendar that you can uh, find that's going to that you're going to use because that's it any tool is only as good if it's going to be used then once you've got your calendar and you're putting your content out there now is where we monitor and adjust we track and we measure and we should be doing this on a regular basis. I like to um, a review each month, just seeing um, what what's working and perhaps more importantly, what's not. So we can drop the bits that aren't um, or we can tweak them and test them again to, to see if the, the tweaks that we make help improve them. But um, it, it's important that we track. So what should we be tracking? Well, when it comes to your social media, don't overcomplicate it, um, but track likes, certainly track your comments and shares, you know, because this is the engagement side of things on that. And then, then look, you should be getting or should be generating regular reviews. You know, you're building your Google review list up. Um, if you think about Google as an example, um, I, I travel a lot. Um, so if I'm going to a new town or city, or certainly new area and I like my coffee so if I'm looking for a coffee shop coffee shop near me goes into the Google map and I'm looking at the list of results that it uh, um, reports back to me I'm making my decision initially on how many good reviews that business has had if if one has had um, 147 reviews and uh, a rating of average rating of 4.8 and another one has a five-star review, but it's only got three reviews, then I'm going to be guided towards the one that's got 147 reviews. Real quick rule of thumb. For every year you've been in business, I would like to see that you've had 10 reviews. So if you've been in business 10 years, then uh, simple match 10 by 10, you would have at least 100 Google reviews on on your on there so that, that that's a good place to start with that but if you analyze the feedback you get reviewing comments reviews etc it's going to give you some valuable insights into what your audience preferences are and that allows you to then enhance the overall engagement you have with these individuals key point to remember here watch how well your content is doing to understand what people like helps you spot trends and make smart decisions based upon data, ensuring your content plan fits with your overarching main business goals. Key is remember, obviously I'm building out and helping you build out a calendar here, but uh, I don't want you to block it out so it's completely covered and completely filled. It's important. Don't get me wrong that it's important to have that consistency and to have that content there. But we also want to stay flexible because, you know, we've got to be uh, ready for when topics appear in real time that we can jump on board. We can grab the coattails. Examples, for example, would be when the 30 day plank challenge um, became popular. You know, you can piggyback off that uh, type of uh, topic. To, to amplify the message about your business and your brand. Equally, looking at times when um, health and wellness news hits the headlines, you, you can jump on, on board with that. I'm going to use the example here when you says high intensity interval training is good for the whole fitness brand, quickly can share uh, easy uh, workouts, explain why they're healthy, talks about why it matters. Equally, you might. Uh, disagree with that you might not be a fan of interval training so you could put together uh, your 
argument on that fact. You know, I'm over 50 now, so it's, although I love that style of training, it's not the best style of training for somebody of my age. So perhaps my argument would be of that and explain uh, my point um, uh, on that particular topic. But it's, it's important to be able to do that. I always remember when I was based in Australia, there was a client, uh, we had the biggest loser Australia um, um, over, over on the TV at the time. Um, so you can tell, going back a few years here. And this uh, studio owner hated the, uh, with a passion. Hate, I suppose, is a strong word, but he disliked the... Um, the manner in which the coaches on that program were delivering the sessions, the way they were, well, they weren't talking to their clients. I don't know if, if you've ever watched The Biggest Loser, but they belittle uh, the contestants on there and the members on there. So he did a piece um, berating about the, uh, this particular thing and it got picked up. He put it on his social media, it got picked up by local media and, and then it went to the national media. So it just shows if you stay flexible and you're on point, it can amplify uh, messaging get, uh, and get um, extensive um, eyes uh, learning uh, about your business, which is ultimately what we're looking to do with your marketing. So we want to reflect and plan ahead. That's the key of um, we're putting these uh, calendars together. You know, we more often than not, I see it a lot within the fitness industry. We're reactive. I need clients. I need clients now. Um, it's a struggle to get the, the the ball rolling when we're at that stage. You know, if we're successful now, it's because of the work we've done uh, two, three, four months previously. And if we're consistent in that, it injects um, growth, it promotes success. But um, that that's the key on that side of things. And I always remember, uh, again, working with clients, there was a particular client who had his best January ever. Then he had his best February ever. He had his best March ever. And everyone else within the community uh, that we had of these fitness professionals, tell them what we're doing. What's the secret? What are you doing? It wasn't what he was doing then and there. As I say, it was the work he'd done in the, in the quarter prior, um, generating uh, consistency through October, November, December gave him those best months in January, February, March. So when it comes to content creation, um, I want to share the tools that I particularly like to use. It changes uh, somewhat, but um, these will be um, uh, three of the tools that I, I uh, stick with closely. Canva, uh, for those that don't know, is great for designing graphics. Hey. Even for doing presentations, that's this uh, masterclass today. It has been built and it's been presented through Canva. So it's a great tool and you can utilize it for free. Although I do have the paid version just to give me um, added um, elements that we can bring to the table, such as this and uh, professional images and stock images and the likes. Adobe Sparks is great for creating videos. Um, D Descript is, is a great AI tool that you can help edit videos and things now uh, as well. And of course, ChatGBT is fantastic, although there are, uh, obviously we have now Google Gemini. Um, there's, there's whole heaps of different AI elements that we can utilize, but they're tools. We, we don't um, use them 100%. Um, we use them to, to uh, help us overcome uh, a certain element to speed up the process, but we need to add that human and that personal touch to things as well. Point to remember here, this toolkit serves as a practical aid for fitness professionals, providing accessible and user-friendly tools that empower you to elevate the visual appeal and professionalism of your brand and of course, of your business. 
So uh, if you've got any questions, uh, please, obviously this is recorded, but please drop them in the box below and I will deal with them. I'll respond to every question I get asked. Um, but the key now is obviously to, you know, take action um, to apply the strategies that I hope you've learned in this uh, masterclass session today. And I've put together a 2024 fitness content marketing calendar. It is a paid uh, piece, although I do have a free month extracted out for those if you want to uh, kick the tires, so to speak, and give it a go and to learn more. But if you're interested in the full 12 month calendar, then by all means, you, you can grab a copy. I've got the link on the next slide to show you. Uh, but it's it's nineteen nineteen dollars um, uh, to purchase, so it's it's relatively uh, you know it's a, it's four coffees probably um, and that. So it's it's priced um, uh, cheaply, I guess, but it, it's affordable um, in this day and age. But it's packed full of content. But as I say, if you want uh, a free copy, drop me a line. Uh, you can drop me a line in, in the comments below. Or you can get me at Andrew Wallace HQ. Uh, Wallace is W A double L I S. So Andrew Wallace HQ. You'll find me on the socials um, on Facebook and primarily Instagram on that side of thing um, on that. Or you can get me um, Andrew at Andrew Wallace dot me M E. Um, that's my website name. And if you want to grab a copy of it, um, of the calendar, you can find out more about it at andrewwallace.me forward slash 2024 fitness marketing content calendar. And you'll see that there's um, dashes between each of them. But thank you for your time today. I hope you found this valuable. And as I say, yeah, please use it. It's, it's a framework I've used for the last I say five or six years, it's probably uh, a little bit more in, in, in all honesty, but it's the process that I, I work and help my clients put together so that they can find their freedom. And um, in showing you this in today's session, I hope you find your freedom too. Thanks for now. I'll see you again very soon in an upcoming masterclass. Take care. Bye.